Yes. All right. Um, so next, uh, uh, let's move on to our next paper. Uh, the title of the next paper is Reflections from Practical Experiences of Managing Participatory Media Platforms for Development. And this paper will be presented by Aditya Sher Shed from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Adi, you are. Great. Uh, I hope uh, the screen is visible and you can hear me. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Great. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to present this paper on behalf of so many people uh, who've been linked with the Grambani or, uh, team. And uh, also very excited to actually follow these two fantastic presentations. Uh, I think it's a, it's perfectly placed because um, the two presentations have uh, built up this very interesting analysis of existing networks. And as uh, practitioners and researchers in this space where we want to actually bring about a change using social media, using participatory media. So our paper is actually more about that, that how can we uh, configure these social media networks or participatory media networks that we're managing to bring about a change that we want to bring about. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, and actually, uh, before I start, I also uh, just throw in a quick apology that there's a little bit of repetition from my talk yesterday, and I hope uh, uh, you, you won't mind it too much. Um, so like my talk yesterday and other talks also in that session uh, yesterday, uh, here also I want to draw emphasis to the broader program design behind ICTD projects, uh, which is very relevant to bring about a change because it's not just the platform alone that does it. And in this talk, uh, I basically talk about participatory media platforms for development where we use six case studies from our work to identify several design axes which can guide this program design. Um, and as you would understand, right, the objectives, local context and constraints, they can all result in very different programs even though the underlying technology is the same. So it's really about how do we configure this technology in different contexts to bring about a change that we want to uh, bring about. And all this again builds up on Ubaiwani, which I talked about yesterday, that it's an IVR platform, interactive voice response platform, uh, where people can give a missed call to a phone number that we popularize among the community. Our server cuts the call and calls them back, uh, and users can then listen to audio messages in a list or they can record their own message. The voice messages which are thus recorded are moderated by our team and publish on the platform for others to listen to them. And these messages could be questions or news or viewpoints, and they'll also then be shared with wider stakeholders. Um, so this, there is a rich history in our community of similar platforms, which uh, we've been referring to as voice forums. Uh, and here's a, a partial list, that there's many more. Uh, and they, they have been used in a wide range of domains, including agriculture, health, education, governance, and cultural entertainment. And the typical impact pathways that most such interventions have followed are basically along four uh, paths. Uh, one, uh, that these platforms can drive awareness and behavior change uh, because they bring up bottom-up content, which tends to be more contextual and hence more easily understandable and relatable by the people. Uh, two, uh, such platforms can become avenues for marginalized groups to voice themselves and talk about their problems, which can be heard by many others and bring in greater social accountability. Three, it provides a means for local communities to reconnect with one another, which strengthens their bonding and solidarity. And four, uh, they're able to, uh, the use of voice is able to jump illiteracy and internet access barriers. So six case studies cover diverse domains and outcome goals. The first are the mobile money clubs, which are district level local communities spanning diverse stakeholders and who share a wide variety of information with one another on local news, government schemes, agriculture advisory, and so on. The second, Jivika Mobile Vani, is a program we are running with the large women's self-help group network with a focus on institution building, health and nutrition information, and livelihood opportunities. The third, Kahi and Kahi Baate, uh, this roughly translates to said and unsaid stories. Uh, this is a platform for adolescent boys and girls to seek information on sexual and reproductive health and to also build a rights-based understanding of their autonomy. The fourth and fifth are platforms with a focus on labor rights. A TTCU Kural operates in partnership with an all-women trade union in the textile and spinning mill sector. And Saja Manch operates in an independent manner in North India with a focus on promoting collectivism among workers. Finally, the sixth are platforms for physically disabled people 
uh, one in Kannada and one in Hindi, where people share jobs and other opportunities with one another and offer advice. And all these platforms use the same underlying technology, uh, but they operate independently of each other. And as you can see, they are all operating in very different contexts with very different sets of users. And therefore, by examining them together, we were able to identify several axes along which they are similar or different. The first axis we discuss is whether segregated platforms for specific user groups should be built or a common platform which has multiple user groups can be used. On the one hand, having diverse user groups on the same platform can bring a lot of diversity, which is the case uh, with the mobile money clubs where uh, we ran a campaign on early marriage. And a simple quote demonstrates this of how the campaign led to positive outcomes when parents and children both listened to messages left by others. The campaign had mothers recording pledges that they got married early, but they will not let their daughters get married early. Couples would describe challenges that they faced uh, when they got married early, and fathers recording about financial difficulties because of which they had no option but to marry their daughters early. Essentially, the problem itself is so multidimensional that being able to engage people from the entire household was instrumental for its success. On the other hand, in a campaign on nutrition for pregnant women and small children, we wanted to primarily engage women, and if possible, then their husbands as well. However, when we ran the campaign on the mobile money clubs, which have mostly been men dominated, despite much effort with trying to diversify the use base to include women, we did not really succeed. The percentage of women users remained the same, and content contributions by women on a mostly male dominated platform remain negligible. Rather, a dedicated platform we built just for women, Jivika Mopalwani, and popularized it via the Jivika self help group network was very successful. It reached a lot of women who shared their experiences and challenges they faced in getting nutritious food. It also managed to reach many men who were happy to listen to the content but not contribute, saying that only women recorded content on it. A segregated platform therefore seemed to have created a safe space for women who were otherwise not comfortable in participating on a male dominated platform. In the same way, the Kahi and Kahi Bate platform for adolescents has very little content contributions by girls. IVR surveys revealed an almost 50% gender ratio, but most questions on the platform are asked by boys. And as the quote explains, this is not altogether surprising since sexuality is considered a taboo topic. The SRHR expert responding to the questions helped make them widely applicable to both genders, but girls still remain hesitant to ask questions and record content. Change is possible though, uh, I talked about it a bit uh, yesterday, like, and we were able to accomplish this on the cast and class front with mobile money clubs. By diversifying a volunteer base and encouraging more exposure to content from marginalized groups helped uh, in bringing more users from lower class and caste groups to the platform. But this exactly reveals the complexity in deciding where and for what issue is it better to run segregated platforms for different groups or to have a common platform where different groups can participate. The second axis we felt important is whether the platforms should build a norm of anonymous reporting by users. Kahi and Kahi Baate is particularly interesting being a platform meant to encourage adolescents to ask anything and everything about their sexuality, insecurities, relationships, etc. Questions asked by them, even if they mention their names and other details in the voice recordings, are not published. Rather, the expert who answers these questions repeats some of her question in her answer. This helps build a sense of security among the users. Further, even though IVR surveys or outbound calls to the users may help both understand them better and build more engagement, the project has refrained from doing so to reassure the users that their privacy is safe. Saja Manch and TTCU Kural work on labor rights and face a different issue, where if users complain about rights violation at their workplace, the employer may dismiss them. One of the techniques used is that the recordings on the platform are therefore often done by volunteers and the factory name is mentioned, but not the worker's name. The volunteers too sometimes don't report their own names, but use pseudonyms. These reports can then be forwarded by the IVR system in a completely anonymous manner to the company's management or HR or to union partners who can then uh, uh, work on it. On the other hand, the mobile money clubs have developed a norm where people freely give their name, location, and other details. Much of the complaints on mobile money are about government schemes. And these raw recordings are used by the volunteers to forward questions for prompt action and redress. Our interviews show that this confidence is partly because people came to know through our field volunteers in person and therefore don't perceive of mobile money as a distant, faceless platform. 
Partly we feel it also has to do with growing political awareness and much work by local activist groups and civil society, which gives people the confidence of speaking truth to power. But really both work hand in hand, the political confidence as well as the reassurance by the volunteers. Anonymity therefore is also a highly nuanced aspect and can be enforced either as a policy or slowly developed as a norm for different platforms. Anonymity also has a relationship with misuse, as we all know, with issues on social media to do with misinformation. And uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. The third axis is related to a significant impact pathway for which participatory media platforms are used to create awareness and behavior change, since user contributions help make the messaging more contextual and complete. Different platforms have used different models, such as question answering, where users ask questions and the answers are provided by experts, or peer-to-peer -peer question answering where other users have provide answers or by creating entertaining radio drama episodes followed by discussions about these episodes where we put up questions to the users or what do they think about the actions taken by the characters in the drama, any similar person stories they would like to share and so on. Sometimes these discussions are also initiated by putting up facts and figures or anchoring policy questions to current news events and then asking people for their reactions. Different trade-offs obviously exist between these different models, making some more suitable for certain topics and others, and I won't go into the details right now. Our broader point, however, is that this choice of format is an open research question that will be worth investigating deeper. ICTD interventions may need to work on capacity building of the users for them to learn how to use the technology and also to inform them about the platform. We call this process community mobilization. Depending on the context, however, different pathways may be needed for mobilization. In rural areas with less literate populations on the other side of the digital divide, we found that it is important to even explain how IVR systems work. In the mobile money clubs, we have developed elaborate offline processes executed by community volunteers by holding community meetings in which we demonstrate the system and explain its relevance, do wall paintings and distribute pamphlets to tell people about the platform and encourage people to share messages with their friends. Similarly, when mobilizing for women platforms, we face a significant digital literacy challenge where many women did not even know how to dial phone numbers. This has been well documented as a digital gender divide since patriarchal setups like in North India imply that in cases where a single phone might be shared across a household, it is the husband who keeps the phone and not the wife. We therefore build digital literacy modules and work via a large SNG network, which was great because the self-help group brings the women together once every week and continuous persuasion gradually resulted in more women bringing phones to these meetings where practice lessons could be delivered. Saja Manch in urban industrial areas puts up a new challenge for offline mobilization though. Workers have long shifts and it is very difficult to catch their attention. Every morning when a sea of workers is marching to work between just a window of 9 to 9.30 in the morning, our volunteers stand on the side of the road and walk to the hotel about Saja Manch. But the outreach we can achieve is minuscule in this limited time window. Approaching workers even in the residential colonies on Sundays is difficult because they are mostly in a mood to relax or busy with other household chores. We have tried other alternatives like off offering financial incentives to spread the word and the use of social media and WhatsApp with some limited success, but much remains to be done over here. Our main message is that the discovery of mobilization pathways around the ICTs is an important question for ICT initiatives to answer. The fifth axis is something that has seen a lot of interest in the online social media space of content moderation. Should platforms be moderated to prevent misuse? What is the feasibility of algorithmic moderation? How do usage norms emerge? Are all very relevant questions. Our own experience with mobile money has been quite telling. All content on the mobile money clubs is moderated and this practice started more for the need to filter for good audio quality, but then expanded to also make sure that the tone of the messages shared on the platform was respectful and not abusive and later expanded to also encourage a diversity of views. The result of all this we feel is that norms of respectful usage have emerged and we hardly receive any content that is rejected due to such objectionable reasons. In the same way, even on platforms like Kahi and Kahi Baat and Sajamanj, where anonymity is encouraged, similar usage uh, norms have kept misuse at the minimum. Our conclusion from this experience is that editorial policies are essential to establish usage norms. And these norms, once established, are not easily broken. An important open problem in front of us is that how can editorial policies also shape the overarching agenda 
which connects very closely with the framing discussion in the previous talk. Agenda is easy to control in mass media where a central team creates all the content, but controlling the agenda in a participatory media platform is much harder since different users could approach it from different perspectives. A delicate balance needs to be struck between gently inducting these users to participate on the platform, but also guide or nudge them towards some normative agenda or manifesto that the platform may have embraced. We are trying to work a bit in this direction through algorithmically controlled ranking of content to give more exposure to content that is in agreement with the stated mandate of the platform. So I'll skip the final axis. Um, and here the idea is that it is relevant uh, a lot for community mobilization, where we need to understand how, what the platform can do for the community and then convey this more widely, that what is its purpose and how can it be useful. And there are different approaches, a needs-based approach, aspiration-based approach, and a rights-based approach. And uh, our experience largely has been that needs-based or aspiration-based approaches can serve as quick entry points to build traction with the community by gradually moving to a rights-based approach. This is because things like governance improvement or enforcement of labor rights is not easy. And if communities do not see a strong validation, it will be hard to sustain their interest. Uh, so in summary, I uh, just want to reiterate that ICT projects uh, need a program designed beyond just the technology. And our discussion in these six axes can provide hints on how to establish ICT interventions using participatory media platforms. A lot of it also extends to social media. And in the paper, we discuss a bit on, uh, on how much the current social media platform like Facebook, WhatsApp, Reddit, uh, what sort of flexibility do they provide so that we can configure these platforms for similar kind of use cases. So I'll uh, stop for questions now. Thanks. Uh, I think we can take one short question. Um, is there a hand from the audience? I don't see any question on the uh, so Adi, I had this question. So uh, content moderation is great, but uh, uh, have you found like any difficulties, like any, you know, like a uh, division uh, between the moderators while moderating the questions? Like any, um, they are like philosophically different about any topic, this kind of uh, questions. Um, have they ever emerged in your, in, 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 in this program? Yeah, no, I mean, it happens quite a bit uh, because uh, some of the platforms have a very clear mandate uh, and a very clear agenda. Uh, so uh, so it's uh, a lot of it is about training of the moderators so that they understand the complexities and the nuances and then accordingly they can handle it. Uh, so sometimes it goes wrong also. Uh, uh, and for example, in our, uh, in our mobile money clubs, one of the things we're trying is distributed moderation where we are trying to delegate more and more of this moderation to our volunteers. Uh, it wasn't feasible until now because a lot of them didn't have smartphones, uh, but now most of them do. Um, so we're opening up these apps so that they can rank content, they can discuss, come to a consensus on objectionable content, different pieces. Uh, so that's, that's one of the directions. Thank you very much, um, Adi. So if, uh, if someone has like more questions for Adi, you can take that after this session. So. Uh, thanks, Adi. Thanks, thanks everybody.